What's up guys, I'm Brad Rodriguez from Fix This, Build That, and today I'm continuing my shop storage overhaul with these DIY garage base cabinets. You can mix and match the different storage options and they're made with a small shop or garage in mind with a small footprint. Stay tuned, I'll show you just how I made them. After building my upper cabinets a couple months ago, it was time to make the base cabinets to match. Now I'm using Baltic birch plywood like I do on all of my shop projects because I just love how stable and solid it is. Now I'll be building two cabinets with different storage options in each one. I started off by cutting the sides for both cabinets from my 3 quarter inch plywood. And then I moved to my workbench to mark for the toe kick. Now the toe kicks are just a simple notch out on each side and it gets the same cut for every piece. So I laid out the measurement on one piece and then I flipped through the other sides marking the location of the notch on each one. I've cut these before with a jigsaw, but using a fence on a bandsaw is much easier and it's more repeatable. And once you get that cut set up, it can be repeated on all the sides, just cutting to the end lines that I marked out earlier. To finish the notch, I flipped the piece and I adjusted the fence for that second cut line. Now this one is even easier as you just cut until that piece releases and there's your notch. Next I went back to the table saw and I cut the parts to connect the sides together. Now each cabinet will have a full bottom piece, two small top supports, and two supports on the back. I pulled out my pocket hole jig and I drilled holes in all the connecting pieces for joinery. Now pocket holes are a great option for shop cabinetry as they're fast, easy, and they provide you all the strength that you need. To help hold the parts together, I'm using the new corner clamps from Craig, the sponsor of today's video. The clamps hold the parts square and it has a little recess that fits right over the pocket hole. You can hold everything tight and still drive in the screw without needing to move the clamp. Now I'll have a link down below in the description of this and all the items that I use today along with downloadable plans to make your own cabinets. These top supports for the cabinet are going to hold and secure the worktop to the cabinets later and the back supports will be used to attach them to the wall. The cabinet I'm working on now is going to have a full size adjustable shelf above a pull out tray on the bottom. And drilling the holes for the shelf pins is pretty easy using a jig to reference the front and the back of each side. I drilled the holes in the middle section of both sides and then I moved on to making the pull out tray. I'm using 110 degree European hinges for the doors and they don't swing fully out of the way of the sides when open. So to keep the tray's drawer slides from hitting the doors I needed to install some half inch spacers here. I glued and brad nailed the shims on each side using a piece of quarter inch plywood to raise them off the base. To finish off the carcass construction, I measured and cut a back for the cabinet out of quarter inch plywood. The back can be installed with brad nails or staples and it'll help keep the cabinet from shifting out of square. I'm installing these cabinets along the side wall of my garage and from one end of the run to the other there's about an inch drop to deal with. So having adjustable feet for these cabinets is a must. I cut and attached these blocks with brad nails and glue to the bottom corners where I'll install leveling feet after the glue dries. Then next I went back to the table saw to cut the parts for the pullout tray. This tray is very basic with just four short sides that are cut to fit in the cabinet with a quarter inch plywood bottom. I didn't do anything special here for the joinery, just glue and brad nails. You can get away with this with Baltic birch since the edges of the plywood have so much long grain in them. But if you're using lesser quality plywood, some screws here can really quickly strengthen those connections. The bottom is attached with glue and staples, which really lock the whole tray together and make it a solid assembly. And to hide that plywood bottom from being seen from the front or the sides, I used a chamfer bit in my router to bevel it back. And when you're done, you can't tell the difference between this and a floating bottom panel in a groove. And this glued on panel is really strong since basically it just becomes one piece. To mount the pull out tray I used full extension drawer slides. I attached the slides to the shims that I installed earlier with small mounting screws pre-drilling the holes first. Then I used that same quarter inch plywood scrap to hold the tray off the bottom and put the tray between the sides. A few screws on each side hold the tray in place. I really love having this slide out tray like this. It's a great option so you don't have to dig for items in the back of a cabinet. With the carcass complete, I moved on to the doors for this cabinet. I like the clean slab look for my doors. And one thing I think is underrated 
is making sure the grain is going the direction you want and cutting the doors consecutively from the sheet of plywood for a continuous grain look. This just makes it look so much nicer and oh does it soothe my OCD. Now next I put the cabinet on its side to position and install the hinges. I mark the layout lines for the center of each hinge on the cabinet. Then I transfer those marks onto some blue painter tape that I put on the doors so I can reference my hinge drilling jig on it. I'm using a concealed hinge jig here that makes drilling out these cups pretty foolproof. You don't have to have a jig to get it done, but it sure does make it a heck of a lot easier and faster. For the cabinet side of the hinges, I use the template included in the hinge packaging to mark and drill the holes. And with everything in place, the install is pretty easy. I usually install hinge doors to the cabinet once the cabinet is standing up, and I have no idea why I've done this in the past. Doing it this way on its side is way easier. I repeated the process on the other side, and I just needed to install the leveling feet to finish up the cabinet. Now here are the pieces that I'm using for the leveling feet. It's just a 5 16 of an inch T-nut and a 2 inch carriage bolt. I used a 3 8 of an inch drill bit and marked it with tape to drill deep enough for the full bolt to go into so I can have a full 2 inches of travel on this leveler. After drilling out the hole, the T-nut insert gets hammered in and it's a quick and easy leveler foot that you can make on the cheap. Now the second cabinet carcass is made exactly the same way as the first, until we get to the internal storage. And hey, if you're new to the channel and you like what you're seeing, go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss the rest of my shop build out. Now this cabinet's going to have a shorter adjustable shelf that will leave room for storage on the doors. I clamped a piece of scrap plywood to the front edge and I used it as a reference for that jig, which worked out great. And to account for the extra weight of the storage on the doors, I went to three hinges on this cabinet versus two. I installed them the same way as before and I just added the extra hinge right there in the middle of the door. The cubbies for the doors are really pretty basic as well. I'm using three quarter inch plywood for the bottom and the sides and quarter inch plywood for the front strips. I cut two different sizes, one for glue bottles and one for spray paint. And they ended up being two and three quarters of an inch and two and a half inches which seemed very necessary at the time for a snug fit. <laughs> but really, it just goes to further prove my OCD. I mean, come on, man. Just make them all two and three quarters of an inch. Jeez. I like the look of the cubbies from my wall cabinets, so I made these the same way with a rounded corner on the top. A group of sides can all be cut at the same time on the bandsaw by wrapping them together with tape, or you could cut them individually with a jigsaw. Now just make sure you have your stacks of quarter inch different pieces aligned down to the nearest 64th of an inch. <laughs> now after cutting both stacks, I smoothed the rough edges on my oscillating belt sander, but you could easily do this with an orbital sander as well. The cubby bottoms are connected to the sides with pocket screws. Then I measured up and made a reference line for the top rail and secured it with brad nails. The lower rail goes on flush with the bottom of the cubby with brad nails as well. And then you have a nice little holder for extra bottles and cans that could go right on the door. But before installing them, I wanted to drill the door hardware and put some finish on the cabinets. I drilled the holes for the handles with the Craig cabinet hardware jig, and yes, I learned from my mistake on the last video, and I checked the width between the holes first. I applied two coats of water-based polyurethane to the cabinet doors and sides for protection against wear and tear. When the finish was dry, I removed the doors from the second cabinet and pre-drilled and attached those cubbies. Now the only thing to keep in mind here is to make sure that they're mounted far enough away from the edge to make sure they won't hit the other door when they're swinging open. I sized these so that they could butt up against the hinges and still clear the doors. After installing the cubbies, I put the doors back on and then I attached the door hardware, which are these simple modern bar pulls that I love. The last part of the build is the top. After ripping the top panel to width on the table saw, I brought it to the workbench to cut to length. I used my circular saw and AccuCut guide for the cut here, and to make sure that I didn't get any tear out on the top of the panel, I wrapped the cut line in blue tape, and this gives those wood fibers a little bit of extra support. I drilled pocket holes on the underside of the panel to hold the trim tight while the glue dried. The trim I'm using here is a 1x2 maple, and it's going to give the top a double thick look without having to fully double stack the plywood. I ran a bead of glue on the front trim and I secured it with screws through the panel, leaving the front piece long on both ends. Then I glued and butted the side trim against the front and screwed it in place. 
And with the trim locked in place and the glue drying, I could cut the overhanging pieces flush for a nice tight butt joint at the corners. I used a piece of painter's tape here to protect the side trim while I was cutting it flush with the pull saw. And I did the same thing on the overhanging side pieces on the back. Now this is an easy way to get a nice looking joint without a lot of fuss. Next I cut some long strips from leftover pieces of plywood to fill out the front and back of the underside. This will give a solid place to rest on top of the cabinets and to secure it with screws. I added similar pieces to the sides to finish off the top. After I got done with that, I flipped the top over and I did some sanding on the top just to make sure all the trim and the plywood was flush and ready for finish. I applied two coats of poly to the top and then I started mounting those cabinets. Now the leveling feet worked out great and they got everything aligned and level and I secured the cabinets to the wall. Then I added the top and screwed it down from underneath. Now since I was working with scraps, I ran out of long strips for the toe kick, so I'll need to add that on later. But I'm loving the look of this and the coordination of my upper and base cabinets now. And these extra little storage features give me some more versatility. And since these are only 20 inches deep, they're perfect for a working garage that needs to share space with other stuff like cars, if you're into that kind of thing. Hey, you want more vids? I've got a video right there. YouTube says that's your favorite. I think you're gonna love the shop playlist down there. But if you want plans for this build to build your own, there's a link right down below. You can check that out too. If you're not subscribed to the channel, I'd love to have you as part of the team. And until next time, guys, get out there and build something awesome.